So hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, big thanks to you all for joining us today and a big thanks to Graham from Adobe uh, for joining us as a guest presenter as well. Um, I've posted in the chat, but just for everyone to know, if you do have any questions, please post them at any time um, and we'll cover them at the end then in the Q&A. Um, and we also have LD and Owen who's on, who are on hand to cover the chat. So if you do have any licensing questions as well, um, they are PU's licensing experts for Adobe, so they can be um, answering any questions as you go then as well. So my name is Mark Price. I'm the business development director at Pew Computers. Um, so I'm just going to be briefly covering exactly what these new webinars are. Um, and then I'll also give a couple of minutes overview of Adobe's licensing options for anyone who might not be um, completely up to date with them. And then I'm going to give a quick introduction to Adobe Firefly then, which is Adobe's new uh, generative AI. Um, and then Graham will delve into a bit more details afterwards then. And Graham then um, is going to recap all the biggest announcements from Adobe Max this year, which is their creativity conference uh, back in October. And then he'll also do a bit more of a detailed look at uh, the Firefly AI, including some live demos, which would be handy for you to see. I know some people might have played around with it already, but um, you can see some of that in action then in uh, some of the Adobe apps. And then finally, he's going to end on just a few Adobe resources. So there's some free Adobe resources available um, for education. So across all tiers of education and uh, relevant to nonprofits as well then. So just, um, just to kick off with this, so these are brand new uh, webinars we are running. So it's a brand new series, um, a monthly series. So Typically, it'll be on the first Wednesday of every month, so we have had to change it a bit for this one due to everyone's availabilities. Um, and then moving on, it, it should be the first Wednesday of every month, unless there are holidays and things like that then. So we'll keep you up to date on the dates and times and everything. Um, and we do something similar already for our Microsoft customers, so it's something we've been doing now for um, over a year with our Microsoft Campus customers um, and we've had some very good uh, feedback, very positive feedback about the, the value we can add to them. Um, so, you know, we cover things like latest news, uh, any updates, um, we give expert knowledge, licensing knowledge, licensing changes, um, if there's product end of life and things like that. So it's about giving you the best advice really as a trusted partner and making sure that you get the greatest possible return on, on your investments then. So, so this is what we're trying to do now with, with our Adobe customers, which is why you're all here today. Um, so we're hoping to do the same with you and, and uh, show you some things maybe that you were unaware of and some best practices and live demos and things like that. Um, and they will run from 11 till 11.30 then. So we try and keep them short and sharp um, not to take up too much of your time. Um, and we want as many people as possible on these as well. So if, if you've got any colleagues who may be interested, please pass along the invites. You know, they're, they're more than welcome to register. You know, the, the, the more the merrier with that, really. Um, and they are recorded as well. So if, if you register, you'll receive the link to the recording afterwards, even if you couldn't make it today. Um, and if you want to watch it back then or pass it on to colleagues, you know, you can do that as well then with the link. So just to give a quick overview of Adobe's two main licensing options. So um, if, if you're not familiar with either of these, um, just a quick overview. So you have the, the two main options are the named user licenses or NULs and the shared device licenses then, so the SDLs. So they are very different. So um, luckily within education and for charities, Adobe do heavily discounted licenses. So for both options, there are very good deals to be had, especially around the, the, the packs. Um, so if you commit to a certain amount, um, you get the, the price breaks then. So they work out very, very valuable. But just, just quickly, so the named user licenses um, cover specific users. So whether they're students, teachers, volunteers, or any other staff. 
um, and they're quite straightforward. So if, if you've got 300 users, you just buy 300 named user licenses and assign them to your users and then everyone has access. And that comes with all the benefits as well. So you get the, the mobile apps and the cloud services. Um, so you get a lot more for, for your money with the named user licenses, a lot more flexibility um, and you can access them from home as well. So with a shared device licenses, they're more for specific shared access devices themselves on site. So for example, in schools or universities, if you've got computer labs or classrooms um, or for office environments, if you've got sort of hot desking or devices that are regularly used by different people, as opposed to just, you know, one specific person every day, um, that, that's an option there as well. Um, and that works obviously if, say in a school scenario, if you've got 25 uh, computers in a lab, but you've got 300 students that need to access them, you can just license those 25 devices and then, you know, any number of users can, uh, can access those devices then when they need to. But like I said, the named user licenses comes with a lot more, um, a lot more benefits around the mobile apps. And, and that's what we've seen a lot of people do now is to have a bit of a mixed approach. So you can have, for example, shared device licenses for maybe some of your younger students um, who might just be starting to play around with Adobe Creative Cloud apps um, and have named user licenses then for some of the older students um, and, and staff as well then. So if, if teachers need to, to plan lesson content the night before, they can do that from home and, and um, in the school or university. And the same for students then. So some of the older students who might want to carry on with their projects at home um, at night time, they can do that as well then. So there's a lot more flexibility with the named user licenses. And then I just want to talk about Adobe Firefly AI quickly before Graham goes into um, a bit, bit more further details. Um, so back in March, Adobe unveiled Firefly, which is their exciting new creative generative AI. Um, and since then, we've we've seen Firefly AI functionality filter through into a lot of your favorite creative cloud apps. So Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, for example, have, have started to take on Firefly functionality. Um, and as you can see there in the picture, so that, that's one, one area you can use it for is um, it can take simple natural language text prompts and come up with images uh, sort of right there and then. Um, so it doesn't just search for images and, and present you with an image it finds, it actually creates that from scratch based on, you know, how much information you give it then. And then you can go through and, and tweak it and add, uh, change the backgrounds, change the colours and, and things like that. So we'll see a bit more of that with Graham shortly. Um, and, you know, for, for schools, for example, it's a good way for maybe younger students or younger children to start using Creative Cloud apps. Um, so it gives them that sort of accessibility where they don't have to be professional or, you know, have the, the best skills. They can come in and start being creative and start getting used to, you know, how the apps look and sort of develop from there. And then for, for the older students, you know, it still requires that sort of creativeness and artistic flair, but it does give them a good base then that they can sort of create create that initial image and, and work from there then. So it does cover all ages and, and even down to staff, you know, and teachers, if they want to prepare content and things like that, and that's, that's the perfect tool then. So now that I've touched on that, I'm just going to pass over to Graham. Uh, so he's going to, to kick me off and start sharing his screen now. Um, so he's going to cover some of the exciting Max updates as well as giving you some live demos around Firefly. Um, yeah, so Graham, over to you. Thank you, Mark, and thanks everyone for, for joining and listening in. Um, I'm really, really excited by um, by helping out and supporting with these webinars, so um, hopefully it's, um, it's the first of many. So just a, a brief introduction to who I am. So 
I'm Grimtrick Education Specialist at Adobe, and I help and support um, both schools, universities, as well as partners, uh, elite education partners like uh, Pew. So um, my background, I was a geography teacher for 16 years, and my first Adobe experiences were building really bad websites using Dreamweaver. So um, I built uh, from there I got a real big passion for integrating technology into the curriculum I worked with Northumbria University on the Teach First program and more recently worked as an education consultant helping institutes across EMEA to develop their ed tech strategy and October last year um, joined Adobe. So today is all going to be about um, what's new, what's exciting, what's coming through into Creative Cloud and Adobe products. So um, we'll be looking at what is Max and what's what's new in there, um, what filtered through from education at Max, and then also pointing out some really useful resources um, that are available from Adobe free of charge. So Adobe Max is the creativity conference, and it's both in person and online. And at the conference, there are many industry insights, lots of tips for power usage of Adobe apps. And as well as new features, there's also sneak peeks of future developments. And this year, the main themes were around Firefly and generative AI, the brand new um, Adobe Mac, uh, Adobe Express. So Adobe Express has had a real um, sort of uplift and a complete rebuild. The future of AI um, with Adobe and lots of industry insights. So those were the general themes. And I'm going to touch a little bit on the generative AI side of things. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Firefly and the generative AI um, offering that we've got at Adobe, I'm going to go in and show you some examples, but before I do that, I just want to talk a little bit about actually what is Firefly. And Firefly has been revolutionized in workplaces and classrooms since March, and it's our creative assistant that helps and supports you to get ideas from your mind onto the screen and into into um, a format that you can communicate with your intended audience, whether that's students or the teachers or um, general public. And it's different from other AI models because it's been designed to be commercially safe. It's trained on Adobe stock images, openly licensed content from the public domain where content and copyright has been has expired and it's designed to generate images that are safe for commercial use. And you might think, why am I saying that on an education webinar? Well, this is great for educators because it's really, um, it's got safety in mind. The generative AI capabilities will be embedded into lots of Adobe tools over the coming years. And it's creator friendly, which means that people with low um, or, or or less um, sort of industry knowledge can can get creations using Photoshop or, or Photoshop Express and, and Adobe Express really, really easily. For example, image to from text prompts. But when it comes to education, it's also got features within it which are really useful, such as content authenticity. So every image that is created using Firefly or every Firefly feature used within Photoshop or Illustrator will have a certificate attached to it, letting you know as an educator that artificial intelligence has been used within the creation of the end product. You can go to the Content Authenticity website, which is linked on this slide, and you can upload any image and you will see that either artificial intelligence has been used or more importantly, if you're in a creative subject and you're teaching a concept that involves the students knowing about shading or lighting or how to remove aspects of an image, 
that you can go with safety of mind of knowing that it's authentic work from the students. And we're going to have more webinars covering lots of these features, and we're going to go in more depth about Firefly. So one of the things that we'll put into the into the chat and um, a little bit later on, but also share with you afterwards are all of the updates that have come from Creative Cloud. And there's been all there's over 100 and far more than what we can cover in today's session. So some of them that we are really excited about are around things like generative fill. We've got that editable vector and graphics being able to use text-based editing to make rough cuts in Premiere Pro. These are really, really cutting edge developments that are really, really exciting. And I'm, I'm looking forward in future webinars to cover lots of these with you. In terms of today, we'll have a little bit of a look at Photoshop and Adobe Express, but just to talk about what we've done with Adobe Express, it's been built for the next generation and it's been built for content creators, which is great for people who are integrating technology right across the curriculum. It means that subjects such, such as those in the humanities or the sciences can now bring creativity into their curriculum really, really easily. So we've got an all in one editor where you can look um, previously had a separate video and graphics so the template and the the screens are really easy to use we've got generative ai embedded within there we've got live collaboration within express so multiple students and groups can work on the same piece of work and then we've got for k12 fantastic animator audio and one of the releases that came last week was the ability to add captions to to videos for um, up to five minutes. So what I'm going to do is just get across into the into the Firefly and Express. So first of all, this is Adobe Firefly website. If you've got a Creative Cloud um, named user license subscription or you've got an Adobe Express subscription, you can access this Firefly website and it goes through all of the different AI um, generation that's available. You'll see that we've got 3D to image and text to vector are coming soon. But if I go to text to image and I want, uh, this is great for me as a teacher because I'm thinking starts of lessons, starts of lectures. I might want to use an image for a discussion point or a starter activity or an icebreaker. And quite often I will go searching on the internet and it would take forever and a day to find them. So now what I can do is I can just say what I want to see. So I want to have a steep sided um, V shaped valley. With a stream running through it. And hopefully it in terms of the type and error. It should pick that up, but once I do that, you'll see here that I've now got an image that I can use straight away. The great thing about this, I can save it to a Creative Cloud library to then import into Photoshop later on. I can copy that image to put it direct into um, a PowerPoint, for example, or I can edit within Adobe Express. So if I click on that copy um, image, and I'll like that in there, it will apply, it applies the content credentials, which I can upload later on. And there we go, that's that image there. And there's lots and lots you can um, you can do with this. When I go to, I'm going to jump across now to Adobe Express and we we, we could spend probably half a day on here doing looking at the amazing new features and it's had a complete rebuild. This is the whole menu system. So if you've used Express in the past, it will look very, very similar. And one of this, this landing page is what I would call our 
um, starting point. So I can start with generative AI. So that same text to image I did on the Firefly site, I can use within Adobe Express. I've got generative fill text to template. I've also got quick actions like remove background. One that's been in for a long time is generate QR code. And that is really useful um, because when you go to third party sites, you might get lots of advert pop ups. It's very clean, very easy to use. And what I quite often do is I'll search for templates. So if I wanted to do uh, the water cycle. You can see, oh. Apologies for that, it kicked me out for a second. Um, so I've got a water cycle worksheet. I've got templates that I can already go in. I can remix and I can use and they look really, really good. So me. As a geography teacher with no design skills, I've got something that's really good that I can use in class. The other th things that you're able to do if I click on share. You'll see I've got the option to publish that to Teams. I haven't got an edu demo education Teams site, but you could upload that direct into, into channels and into assignments. If I just come across into this pre-made um, this this pre-made infographic, what we've got are a couple of really cool options. So the first one is translate. Here I've got the completed document. I've got it in English, and what I can do is I can pick which languages I want to put into. So if I've got students with English as an additional language. What I can do is I can duplicate and translate and what it will then do, it will put multiple pages in with those languages. Now this is great, but it's not perfect. The grammar isn't um, perfect on it, but it does the heavy lift for you. So if you've got um, learning assistants who will translate that, you've got those in there. The other thing that you're able to do with the mixed media editor, you can see that this is set up for a poster. But if I do a quick search for a wind farm. And I'm going to put this into here, you'll see that now I've got um, I've I've got that video timeline where I can start building up my scene. Now, the reason why I picked this wind farm is just to show you the remove background tool. If you do green screen activities, this now has got the ability to bring in those extra. Um, uh, bring in that ability to do green screen without a green screen. So you'll see here in a second that it will remove the background and we'll be able to press press play in a second. Typical when you're doing a live demo that it takes its time. Normally this is really quick. What it's busy doing, it's analyzing the full video and removing what it interprets the, the background to be. This is where, I, and when you look here, this is pretty good. The reason why I picked this is because you've got the, the, the windmill there turning. So you've got some really great features and I'm really looking forward to go in, have a deeper dive into Express in future, um, in future sessions. The other thing I want to quickly show you is how I can bring. I can bring. Photoshop across the curriculum, so here I've got the I've got a preloaded image and I don't want to have that house in there. So what I can do is just quickly type remove and generate. And what it's going to do is it's going to analyze the picture and across on the right hand side of the screen here. It's going to give me three options. It's going to give me three options for um, what the scene would look like, and I would pick the best one there. So I want that to be a wilderness, so I'm going to stay with that one, but you can see that I've got different options. And one of the great features that I actually love is this one here. So I'm just going to do uh, take the crop tool and I'm going to expand. I'm not going to press anything and I'm just going to press generate. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to analyze the photo and tell me if I was to take this photo, photo from a wider angle, what would this look like? And again, it's going to give me three different options. Now, as a geography teacher, this is really, really great because I can get the students now to do the start and say to me, expand the image. What features are in there? What processes are acting on that um, scenery? How do we know that this is the most believable? Why did you choose this over the others? So straight away, four or five questions from the different options that are brought about there. So this is really simple to use. Now, if you are you doing this as part of a creative subject, one of the things that you might want is that real that piece of knowledge and safety of mind that actually when it's important, you don't want the AI features used. And when you save that and export it, it will attach that same Firefly certificate and you can upload it onto the um, into the content authenticity website to to go through that. So that is an absolute whistle stop tour of some of the what I feel are the coolest features from Adobe Max and what's coming into and what's come into Creative Cloud and Adobe Express in the last um, few months. And as I say, we'll we'll go in more depth um, next time. Within Adobe Max itself, there were education specific sessions. So there are two sessions that I would encourage you to watch that are no more than 20, 30 minutes. One is about unlocking generative AI in the classroom, and it's an instructional designer from Washington State University who is talking about how to plan lessons to bring in um, bring in generative AI for teaching and learning. The other side of it is from a strategic point of view and exploring the potential of Gen AI in, in education. It's a really informative session that I would encourage you to, to watch. These QR codes take you direct to the sessions, so please feel free to scan them um, when you receive the, the recording later on. The digital trailblazers and student creativity, these are students who won the Digi Digital Edge Awards and these these are students who reinvented assignments to bring creativity in there and the work that they've done is absolutely fantastic and then the final session i recommend you watch is one round three very simple teaching shifts to unlock creativity so it's not gen ai focused but it's around how do we integrate creativity into the classroom there and the final thing that max brought in were sneak peeks and what this is is a set of um, features that are under development some might come into creative cloud apps some might not make it and again the qr code will point you in the right direction but the three that really excite me for education are project scene change this is where you can and you can edit videos and bring generative AI to a video. So the one of the examples that they give is a man walking down um, some steps. He's got a suit on, but no tie. What they do is they make them look a bit smarter by adding the tie in and it's seamless. The second feature, Project Dub Dub. What we're working on there is the ability to change and dub a video into over 100 languages at the press of a button. And then the final one is Project Fast Fill. And what that will do is that will give you the, the ability to change backgrounds, to change images within video. So a lot of the generative AI stuff that's under development is within video there. So really, really exciting. And as I say, the link will be shared afterwards. And then the final update that I've got for you is around some of the free Adobe resources. So there are two links, one for generative AI 
And at the edX platform, we've got information for school and university leaders. We've got information for parents, for teachers, and actually a guide for students on getting started. There's also a link to a short professional development course that takes about 20, 30 minutes to do. I've done it myself. It's really, really good. Gives you lots of ideas for your classrooms. And then the final link for colleagues in higher education, these are sets of free online webinars and digital cafes which talk about integration of technology into the curriculum. So really, really valuable there. Um, thank you very much. It's been a whistle stop tour of, of everything that happened over quite a few days with Max. Um, and I would just like to thank you all for, for listening there. Um, and I'm going to hand back over to I'm going to hand over to Mark to see if there's any questions come in. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Graham. So I'm just going to start sharing again quickly just to um, go over a couple of the webinars we got. So I've just posted in the chat as well. Um, let me just skip ahead. So the next um, next Adobe webinar we've got coming up is actually on the 10th. So even though it's usually the first Wednesday of every month moving forward, um, it will be the second in January just due to the Christmas holidays. Um, I've posted a link to that in the chat so you can register for that straight away if you like. That'd be great to see you there. And just another quick one. So the Microsoft Campus Updates webinars I mentioned at the start, the next one is coming up next week. Um, that's usually the third Wednesday of every month. But again, um, it's been brought forward a, a week due to the holidays. Um, so that's on next Wednesday, the 13th. So again, the link to register for that is in the chat. 